Hello everyone. The last time I worked on the rear brakes on my 2009 Subaru Outback, this happened. It didn't take much to break the rusty old backer plates, but I reassembled everything with what was left of them and drove the car like that for several months before I had to get back in there and freshen everything up in time for my annual New York State inspection. It had noisy rear wheel bearings at this point too, so I got a lot of stuff done at the same time. Along with the backer plates, I replaced my rear wheel bearings and my parking brake shoes and hardware kit. So I took this opportunity to do a parking brake assembly demonstration. This video assumes you know how to remove the wheels and brake rotors. I have other videos that show how to do all that. So this one is starting from this point. So I have a tool here that is designed specifically to remove these springs. And it works by getting this part here under the spring and turning it and then it'll pop right off. If you can see how that works. I was thinking though, I want to find a way to pop that off and show you it can be done without a specialized tool. So the first thing I'll do is put on some gloves so I don't pinch my skin doing this. I think I could probably just get under that spring with a screwdriver, maybe, and pop it out like so. And I really don't need to save these springs and stuff. I think I'll just get a new hardware kit and replace them. But there's one. Let's see if I go this way. There. So you can easily do it with a screwdriver, just like that. Then this piece comes off, and that just holds the uh, shoes from pulling forward. So both of these shoes, the front shoe and the back shoe, have one of these spring-loaded clips on it that hold it in against the backing plate. And that's really the basic support for the shoe. But you turn that screw head 90 degrees and then this will pull out. So that's what it looks like. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how all these parts go back together using 100% brand new parts. 90 degrees. And it's out. Spread these apart a bit. And I can pull this bar out and this spring was on here, it fell off. But this goes between the two brake shoes. I'll show you how you can remove this from this cable. There, now I can pull the spring back. I'll also show you how to loosen the brake cable to make this easier. Take some hand strength. For sure. Pull the spring back, hold it, and then you can pop that off. Okay, well I have a brand new backer plate. I have new brake shoes. I have a new brake hardware kit. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how the parking brake shoe assembly 
is installed and what it looks like and what each component is used for. This is for the passenger side and the rear. So this, this tube here is where the emergency brake cable enters into the back of the inside of the drum. So let me get the brake shoes and open this hardware bag and we'll get to it. Okay, this brake hardware kit, I took out half the components because half is for one side and half is for the other. So let's see what they included. A little packet of white lithium grease and all the items indicated here in red. They included these little hold downs for the brake shoes that go into these slotted holes here that you put them in and turn them 90 degrees and they hold the brakes in. Um, but first they go through here like that and then a spring. Then you have a brake shoe which goes here. So there's these little pads right here. There's three of them. Those are the pads that the back of the brake shoe rests on. And this half moon shape goes against this pin. There you have the uh, retainer, sort of a retainer washer and a retainer spring. here push it in turn 90 degrees now this spring is pushing down downward pressure on the brake shoe to keep it against those three brake shoe mounting pads see that that's what holds them in So there's that like washer, that pin that has the flattened end on it, and the spring. And they insert into a hole in the back that looks like that. Right in there. Maybe you can see it in there. You don't need to. You can see on this side, there's the slotted hole and the into the hole. You turn it 90 degrees and then it can't pull out. So I'll just put the other brake shoe on there. And do the same thing. It goes through there, through the spring, looks like that. You line that up with that hole in, down there, that slotted hole. Take a screwdriver, push it through, turn it 90. And that's it. It's spring-loaded in there now. And that's the thing that initially holds the brake shoes to the backer plate. Okay, here's the old brake shoe that has the brake cable lever on it. So I need to remove that from the old brake shoe. If you look here, it's got this little U-shaped clip that's, that's compressed onto a pin. And this is the new one that came with the kit. So the first thing I have to do is spread this thing open but then once that's spread open like that I can pull it off the pin that holds it in
that's that. Then there's this little sort of spring washer under it. That just helps to keep this pin tight uh, so that this thing doesn't have any play. Now we'll pull this off. Wow, I just opened up the next pair of brake shoes and guess what? They came with two pins. So I'm going to just touch the inside of this with some never sees. Doesn't need a lot. goes there now they gave me a new one of these little washers that goes on there and this little horseshoe shaped clip which goes right under which goes right here slides into the end of that pin didn't say it was easy I want to have it oriented so you can see what I'm doing. clips all the way in, the horseshoe clip, and then squeeze the opposite side so it doesn't pull out. Now I honestly think that horseshoe clip that was provided with this kit, which is a Ray Bestos kit, was not actually wide enough for the pin. It kind of spread the clip out as it went in. Try to get it just a little more. I don't think it's going anywhere. I really think this retainer they provided is the wrong size. Its inside dimension needed to be forced to expand over the OD of the pin. And the original part I removed clearly has a wider inside dimension. Yeah, that should be good. <laughs> Now another thing you can always do when you're assembling this, put a little never seize on those brake pad standoffs. Don't overdo it.
but that'll keep the pads from squeaking when they separate like when the pad actually moves on that when the brake shoe actually moves on those pads the never sees there will keep them from squeaking at 90 degrees and it won't pull out spring loaded now this thing here gets us this blue spring on it sort of sort of an oval shaped or paper clip shaped spring which goes up here That's the position it goes in. This little thing, which goes up here to help keep the shoes from coming out at the top, was not included in the kit. I don't know, I think it should have been. Then there's these two yellow springs. The hole here, the spring goes in there and gets stretched around this pin. Now you can you can struggle with a pair of pliers or something, pair of needle nose to get this spring stretched around there. But they also make these tools that are made for that purpose. So normally the backer plate would be bolted to a car and it wouldn't be moving around on you. The same, same style spring goes on this side as well.
I squeeze the spring hooks a little tighter. Okay, there. That's how it goes together. At the top there. Okay. Going to assemble this star adjuster here. Put some never sees on it. They probably provided that white lithium grease for this, but I like never sees. Because I don't want this thing to ever seize. In my many years of using Permatex anti seize, it has always made a huge difference. Everything has a good coating on it now. The next thing is this piece that goes on the other end. And it gets a little never seized too. So it doesn't rust up. I was careful to orient the adjuster so that moving the star wheel from the back in the upward direction will push the brake shoes apart, which makes them tighter in the drum. See that? And then there's a spring to squeeze those shoes together on the bottom there. Okay, that's it. That's how it goes together. The emergency brake cable comes in through here and gets connected in on this thing. That's the brake lever. You'd normally be doing all this with the backer plate installed on the rear axle. So you'd be attaching the brake cable to the brake lever when you're mounting the brake shoe and securing it with the shoe hold down hardware. When you pull the cable, the shoes push apart like that. You release it, the springs return the shoes. And you use this adjuster after you install the drum. Then you go through the back here with one of these brake adjusters. And move the star adjuster, see that? And you can make the, the shoes either looser or tighter inside that brake drum. And the trick is to spread them out enough. First of all, spread them out enough so that they stop the drum from turning. And then back it off a little at a time until it turns freely. That way you know it's uh, tight enough to work, but not tight enough to be a problem. And then the last piece they sent me was this plug, just a rubber plug for that brake adjuster slot in the back of the plate here. Shove that in there to keep water out. And that's how you replace the brake shoes on a Subaru Outback. This is the rear brake drum. The parking brake drum is integral with the rear brake rotor. They're both the same part. I ran into a problem when I adjusted my brake shoes. I could get them nice and tight so the drums wouldn't turn by hand, 
and back them off enough so the drums would turn freely. But with the parking brake handle in the car pulled all the way up, the parking brake wouldn't hold tight enough to keep the car from rolling down the driveway. So I needed to adjust the brake cable tension at the brake handle inside the car. By the way, all the diagrams shown in this video are from this factory service manual. I purchased this from ZZ Manuals on eBay. Here's the brake cable layout. This adjustment will need to be made on the self-locking nut number 3 inside the red box. The brake cable tension adjusting nut is number 1 in this diagram. Okay, so this boot here actually just snaps in around the edges. So you just use a screwdriver and gently pry it and it'll come undone pretty easily. And you can just kind of work this up out of your way like that. And so the adjustment for the cable tension is right here. This cable wraps around here goes down to the equalizer. The equalizer pulls on both the left side parking brake cable and the right side parking brake cable. And you loosen and adjust them both at the same time right here by adjusting this nut. You can see by the shiny part on the cable threaded end where I tighten the nut a half inch to get my brake handle to pull harder on the brake levers inside the brake drums. Now to reinstall this boot, you can see here there's two clips. They go on the bottom and then there's these three catches here at the top. They all just snap into place. It's pretty simple. And that's that. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.